Today, by the grace of God, we shall continue with part four of our series, The Key That Opens All Doors in the Universe. Say that with me one more time today. I can hear you well. Amen. The key that opens all doors in the universe. Last week, Wednesday, the 1st of February, 2023, as we were preparing for a trip to South Africa, my son, Ulua Sheyi, who is in the sanctuary this morning, thank you so much, Sheyi, for coming. She has been spending quality time for, for, with us in Nigeria. He works in London. He gets paid in London, but he can walk from his bedroom in Nigeria alone. Camille. <laughs> I don't know how. I've called them several times. Are you sure you are working? He said that I will collect money from you. <laughs> I mean, he said, I would knock at his room to say hello. Sir. I'm in the office. I'm in the office. Which office? <laughs> this generation, they are no longer dressing up to leave home at five. Ah, at Gia. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As we were preparing for that trip, she came to me and said, Dad, I had some discussion with Bumi. She explained some things to me, and I think it would be useful uh, for the message you are preaching, I haven't, <laughs> haven't discussed with her sister. Their discussion and conclusion brought so much joy to me. It was a beautiful sent forth, sent forth message for me from Lagos to Johannesburg. You will recall that one of my faithful spiritual sons was so concerned about my submission that the key of David is effective communication and therefore sent a plethora of thoughts and questions to me after I preached part one of this current series. How many of you remember? His main concern is the fact that effective communication can be deployed by even the ungodly and therefore cannot or should not be equated to the key of David that's supposed to be exclusively possessed by the Lord Jesus for the benefit of the saints. Many of you will also remember that I, de I dedicated a whole Sunday service to answer the questions of this faithful soldier of the cross. Do you remember? Yeah. After I preached that message answering all questions, I reached out to him. And he told me that he listened thoroughly to everything but after everything said, he turned to his wife and said that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. What he meant by quoting the words of Jesus to Peter is that it seemed to him from my message and answers to his question that the saints of God have no advantage over the ungodly. That was the same concern she had when he turned to the sister and said, look, I mean, the message that he preached and they spoke back and forth. Well, brothers and sisters, this is completely untrue. As we shall examine the account of apostles Matthew and Mark in this regard, so as to establish the truth that the saints of God definitely have undeniable advantage over the ungodly. Shall we unpack these advantages? Some of them you know, some of them you have not paid attention to. Let's begin with Matthew 19, 16 to 30. Matthew 19, 19, 16 to 30. Now behold, one came and said to him, Go, teacher. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? When we get to Mark, he'll say that I may inherit. So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. 
But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, you shall not murder. He said, yes, sir. Check it right. I'd never murdered. You shall not commit adultery. Yes, sir. I've never committed adultery. You shall not steal. Yes, sir. I've never stolen. You shall not be a false witness. Yes, sir. I've never borne false witness. Honor your father and your mother. I always do, sir. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I also do that. How do I know he answered that th that way? The young man said to him, All these things I've kept from my youth. What do I still lack? All these things I've kept from my youth. You now see why he was rich? Because when you obey God's law, God will respond. When he says, for as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall never cease to know. There was no religion there. There were no Baptists in John's boat. I mean, in Noah's ark. <laughs> no Pentecostal, no Catholic, no one. It was a law for humanity. For as long as the earth remains, this man said, all the laws Jesus mentioned here, he had kept them from his youth. And said, what do I like? Do I lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. Follow you with no fixed address. <laughs> follow you where? I didn't say I want to follow you, I said I want to have eternal life. <laughs> When you get to Matthew, he said, carry your cross and follow me. That compounded it. Carry what cross? It's for criminals. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. You are going to find out why Jesus said that to him when we get to Matthew. We need to compare scripture with scripture. Then Jesus said to his disciples after he had gone, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Ah, trouble. The disciples were looking at him and saying, Are you saying we should not be rich? <laughs> and again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? I think what they are saying is, who really wants to be saved on these terms? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men, this is impossible, but we God, all things are possible. That was the conclusion of that my son to his wife. He said, well, <laughs> with all that pastor had said, with men, it may be impossible. With God, all things are possible. But let's read for that. Peter will not allow Jesus to rest and just go and say, I understand. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all. Irolong Pao. Peter was not being honest here because he still kept his boat. He used that boat on the Sea of Siberia. He said, I go out fishing. He, understood. he didn't sell the boat to he said, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? How many, of, how many of you want to serve God in vain? The Bible says, I did not ask you to serve me in vain. So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. When you read this story in Mark, that will be removed. No ungodly man, no matter how talented, how skillful, no matter how effective he is in communication, will sit on that throne to judge the tribes of Israel. Because they will not be seated with him in heavenly places for above principalities and power. That's an advantage believers have over the ungodly. Let's read on. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife. Are you reading with me? I'm not sure you are. 
Oh, let's read it together. Ready? Read. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my namesake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Rabode, I wrote down another title for my autobiography in South Africa. The last, but not the least. Because I was the last born of 22 children. But definitely I'm not the least. I was studying when I saw that and it inspired me. So the last, but not the least. The authentic autobiography of Pastor Tunde Bakari. So let's start walking. So that these people will get to know the true me. On my 70th birthday, I will unveil. <laughs> Shall I hear? Amen? Amen. Now look at that. Give me back that portion of scripture. And the last bit that I read, that we all read together. No, go back further. And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for now, my namesake shall I receive what? Hundredfold of wife? Huh? Hello? Because wife is there, so I shall receive hundredfold. Now, Matthew was a tax collector. He gathered what he could gather and put it there. Mark would tell you that wife is not included. And one other advantage you have is that the ungodly may have this with pleasure. You are going to have yours with persecution. You carry that burden. Mark chapter 10, 17 to 31. I'm sure you don't want to hear anything about persecution. Now, as he was going out on the road, one came running, knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not be a false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, teacher, all these things I've kept from my youth. I don't know why Matthew did not add, do not defraud to his own account. And I'm not going to give any answer. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you know, he was a tax collector. It's okay. <laughs> then Jesus, looking at him, did what? Loved him. The basis of the command he gave him to follow him is because of his love for him. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. That's the inherent principle of dying daily to your will. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. No, great possessions had him. Whatever you cannot let go already holds you. You are in the grip of that thing. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches, not just have trust in riches, to enter the kingdom of God. That's a clear emphasis there you must never forget. He does not want you to be poor. He wants you to be rich, but he doesn't want riches to own you. Don't trust. Don't put your trust in money. Put your money in trust. And let it continue to work for you. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Why were they asking the question? They desire to be rich too. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, 
but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, As shortly I say to you, ready, read, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, read on, who shall not receive a hundredfold in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution. It did not include and wives. And in the age to come, eternal life. So don't sow your wife and reap a hundredfold. <laughs> but many who are first will be last and the last first. From the two texts of scripture that we just compared, you could see that the believer had advantages. One of them is to bear the burden of the Lord gracefully. Persecution or prosecution, you know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are they called according to his purpose. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials and temptations. Why? Because the spirit of joy grows in the means of persecutions and burdens. So you develop character in the means of persecution. God is pruning you and not punishing you. That's a principal advantage. Another advantage is at the end of the day, you are going to sit together with him on the throne. The ungodly can never smell that. They can have houses, they can have cars, they can have those things in common. Therefore, you have more advantages than the ungodly. Can I hear amen? So if any of you has come to the same erroneous conclusion, the saints have no advantage over the sinners because I said to you that the key of David is effective communication. I want you to please listen attentively to the discussion and the conclusion arrived at by my daughter Olubomi and his brother Olushe who raised the issue with him. I am persuaded that the conclusion they both reached would definitely throw some powerful light on this subject such that it will be clear to all that we are asked the ungodly may possess effective communication skills, yet only the saints of God can maximize the benefits of effective communication. Is this clear? In a bid to make a brother understand the message preached, Bumi used the familiar to explain the spiritual. Would you like to know what she said? Our submission was typed out by she and was given to me on my way to South Africa. And when I got to South Africa, I still said, in addition to what you have given me, send it to me on WhatsApp because I'm about to start studying and preparing. What Mumi said goes thus. Are you ready? You don't sound ready. I'll come back next time. You have forgotten that out of the mouths of babes, he has perfected strength, he has ordained strength, he has perfected praise. We learn from ourselves, we learn from the young. When you're not ready to learn, then you will not grow. This is what she said to her brother who captured it and gave it to me. Are you ready? In major app stores, like the Google Play Store and the Apple Play Store, the apps are categorized into two, namely free app and premium apps. Free apps, as the name suggests, are available at no cost and can be downloaded by anyone. Is that true or false? Only IT people are responding. Analog people don't understand. True or false? However, these free apps usually come with a limited set of features and functionalities often designed to give users a taste of what the app can offer. On the other hand, premium apps 
I've not bought any, I've not downloaded any, so I must, <laughs> I'm equally analog, but I love this analysis and comparison. You understand me? On the other hand, premium apps, also known as paid apps, require a one-time fee or subscription to be downloaded. Yes or no? Yes. I can't hear you. Yes. These premium apps typically come with a complete set of features and functionalities offering the full experience of the app. Yes or no? Yes. In short, free apps offer a subset of features while premium apps provide access to all features. Do you agree? Yeah. Caller, do you agree? Uh-huh, because an IT man. I know those who are IT. I know you too. They know. Some of you are just doing like this. You don't even know what they call app. You're thinking of application for a job. <laughs> if this distinction between free app and premium app, if it's clear to you, then all I've been trying to preach for three previous sessions are made simple. I want you to please listen to my live application of my children's submission as I situate this in the word of God. This may, they may not have. This is the advantage of being a father. And do you understand me? And apply uh, what looks like simple thing and bring out truths of eternal benefits. There are so many passages that can explain this major difference between free app and premium apps. Thank God for the price Jesus paid on the cross of Calvary for the salvation of mankind, including you and I. And some of the free apps that you're about to listen to are like inviting you to come and partake of the full blessing of the gospel of Christ. Based on this sacrifice, the advantages of the saints are premium app over the sinners and the ungodly who merely enjoy free apps. To start with, the Bible sets the template for any truth to be established. If you are going to establish a truth, you must not violate any scripture and at least two or three scriptures must establish what you are trying to pass on. Deuteronomy 19.15 is one scripture that says that clearly. One witness shall not rise against a man concerning any iniquity or any sin that he commits by the mouth of two or three witnesses the matter shall be established. How many witnesses? Two or three. Matthew chapter 18, 15 to 16. The Lord Jesus looked into the crevices of the law and brought this out to share with those who may have grievances against themselves. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if you will not hear, take with you how many? One or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. And Paul wrote to Timothy in 1 Timothy 5.19, establishing the same pattern and the same principle. Do not receive an accusation against an elder except from two or three witnesses. So if I give you three different examples that would distinguish or show you the difference between free app and premium app, would that satisfy you? Good. Let's start with the Sermon on the Mount and see the application of free apps in Matthew 4, 5, 43 to 45. Matthew 5, 43 to 45. Here comes free app. For everyone that you don't need to pay for. <laughs> you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. 
Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. That you may be what? Sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So both the good and the just are treated equally like the evil and the wicked. They both enjoy sunshine and they both have rain. The, the rain that is falling does not jump off their roof. And the sun that is shining does not jump over them. So both the good and the just and the wicked and the ungodly enjoy free up. But let not the wicked think that's the end. We will continue to enjoy that forever because it's free app. Nothing is paid for it. But there is a premium app that only believers can access because of the price Jesus paid. Can I hear amen? amen? What comes upon the sinner and the ungodly alike, such as sunshine and rain, we cease. Whenever God's judgment come upon such leaders, the prophet Amos referred to as the cows of Bashan who operate on the mountain of Samaria. In the midst of such judgment, free app cannot do what premium app will deliver. Are you interested in this? What were they enjoying under free app? Sun and rain. But I say when God decides to punish wicked rulers that he called the cows of Bashan operating on the mountains of Samaria, free app cannot access what premium app can access. Amos chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. Pay attention. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan, who on the mountain of Samaria, who oppress the poor, who crush the needy, who say to your husbands, bring wine, let us drink. The Lord has sworn by his holiness, behold, the day shall come upon you when he will take you away with fish hooks and your posterity with fish hooks. You will go out through broken walls, each one straight ahead of her, and you'll be cast into Hammon, says the Lord. Come to Bethel and transgress. At Gilgal, multiply transgressions. Bring your sacrifices every morning, your tithes every three days. Offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven. Proclaim and announce the free will offerings. For this you love, you children of Israel, says the Lord God. <laughs> Also, I gave you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and lack of bread in all your places. Yet, you have not returned to me, says the Lord. I also withheld... No, hello. I also withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. What's going to happen to your labor? Everything you have planted will just with that. I also withheld rain from you when there were still three months to the harvest. I made it rain on one city. I with her rain from another city. One part was rained upon, and where I did not rain, the part withered. Woo! So God can cause it to rain on a city and cause it not to rain. So don't just take things from granted for granted and say, hey, we all enjoy rain. We all enjoy sunshine. No, 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 no. You enjoy rain and sunshine under free app. But when God's judgment comes down, you will separate one city from the other as it happened in Egypt. Do you remember? We are going to get there in a moment. Let me read further. So two or three cities wandered to another city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet, you have not returned to me, says the Lord. Do you see the difference between free app and premium app here? I can hear you. When judgment comes, and it rains on the city, what are they enjoying? Premium app. And it does not rain on the other city. What is their problem? Free app. So they left where they were to go to where there was raining, but yet there was no satisfaction. Say to your neighbor, which one do you have? Free or premium app? 
Amos chapter 8, again verse 1 to 12. You see how my children sent me to Bible study? Amos chapter, this is exciting to me. Amos chapter 8, 1 to 12. Does the Lord God show me, behold, a basket of summer fruit? And he said, Amos, what do you see? So I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people, Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. And the sons of the temple shall be willing in that day, says the Lord God. Many dead bodies everywhere. They shall be thrown out in silence. Hear this, you who swallow up the needy and make the poor of the land fail. I hope you are hearing me. Those who are making them queue up for everything and turn themselves naked while they are looking for the money they lodge with you, judgment is coming. When will the new moon be passed that we may sell grain and the Sabbath that we may trade wheat, making the effort small and the shekel large, falsifying the scales by deceit, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, even sell the bad wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their works. Pay attention. Shall the land not tremble for days? And every one man who dwells in it, all of it shall swell like the river, heave and subside like the river of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon. Tell your neighbor, sunset at dawn. Are we not enjoying sun all the way? No. In that day, when I begin to judge, I will make the sun go down at noon. I will darken the earth in broad daylight. Have you considered Egypt? That there was light in Goshen and there was gross darkness that could be felt in the same place. But Goshen became a country within a country. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and boldness on every head. I will make it like mourning for all an only son. And it's like, it's end like a bitter day. May your son not be set at dawn. Yeah. All this free app, we can do what we like. No, there's a premium app. Jesus already paid for it, and that's why he's asking you, come unto me, all you that labor on heaven laden, I will give you rest. It doesn't end there. Rather than the sun shining and the rain falling on all people, whether saint or sinner, in the midst of divine judgments, it will be sunset at dawn for the wicked. You can compare that to Exodus 10, 21 to 29, and you see, when you read that portion of scripture, each time I read it, I imagine things that happened to them. Give me Exodus 10, 21 to 29. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness which may even be felt. You could touch it. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Listen to this. They did not see one another. Even if we were in the same bedroom. Now, did anyone rise from his place for three days? What happened to Pupu? What happened to when you wee? But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Do you understand this? They were enjoying premium up. Then Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be kept back. Let your little one also go with you. If you can take your wives, you can take your children, but leave your herds, leave them here. Oh, Moses was smarter. He knew where your treasure is, there your heart will be. You will have to return back. So he said, you must also give us sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Our livestock also shall go with us. Not a hoof shall be left behind. For we must take some of them to serve the Lord our God. Even if we do not know with what we must serve the Lord until we arrive there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let them go. 
Then Pharaoh said to him, get away from me. Take it yourself and see my face no more. For in the day you see my face, you shall die. Moses said, you have spoken well. I will never see your face again. Tell your neighbor, man pass man. Power past power. <laughs> I will never see your face again. Interpret to your neighbor. Who is eating and the dog is wagging his tail. <laughs> Please note also that God is capable of sending an unusual plague upon the wicked that will lead to transfer of wealth to God's people as they drink living waters that flow from Jerusalem well, there will be no rain in the land of the disobedient. Same land. Some will be drinking water, living water from Jerusalem. And yet in other places, there will be not a single drop of rain. It's the difference between free up and premium up. Zechariah 14, 8 to 19. And in that day shall be that living water shall flow from Jerusalem half of them toward eastern sea and half of them toward the western sea. In both summer and winter, it shall occur. And the Lord shall be king. Can I hear amen? amen. Over Nigeria, the Lord shall be king. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Over Aso Villa, the Lord shall be king. Amen. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall be the Lord is one and his name is one. All the land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be raised up and inhabited in a place from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate at the corner gate and from the tower of Hanel to the king's wine presses. The people shall dwell in it and no longer shall there be utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. The future of Nigeria is glorious. It shall be safely inhabited in the name of Jesus. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Huh? Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. It shall come to pass in that day that a great panic from the Lord will be among them. Everyone will seize the hand of his neighbor and raise his hand against his neighbor's hand. Judah also will fight at Jerusalem and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be gathered together. Gold, silver, and apparel in great abundance. Such also shall be the plague on the hearse, on the mule, on the camel, and the donkey, and on all the cattle that will be in those camps. So shall this plague be. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, to keep the feast of tabernacles. It shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no, I can't hear you, there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt will not come up and enter in, they shall have no rain. They shall receive the plague with which the Lord strikes the nations who do not come up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be punishment of Egypt, the punishment of all the nations that do not come up to keep the feast of tabernacles. Are you here with me? No rain. Whereas some will be drinking living water on other territories, there will be no rain. It is the same principle of free up and premium up. Which one are you enjoying? I can't hear you. Tell me the truth. Which one would you like to enjoy? Uh -huh. Because when you get to the bottom of the barrel and you're scratching and scratching and you have no funds, you have nothing. Uh, 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 uh. God is saying, free app is over. Come up here. Can I hear? Amen. Amen. Second example because of time. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, it's true to be established. A second example that shows the difference between free app and premium app is located in the same Salmon on the Mount. There were two gates mentioned there in Matthew chapter 7. The premium app and the free app can be likened to the narrow gate and the broad gate. 
It is true that both are gates. Is narrow gate a gate? Is broad gate a gate? Yes, it is true both are gates. But one leads to one road and the other leads to a different road. One leads the road and their final destinations are not the same. For some, the final destination is destruction, and for the other gate, it is life. Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Matthew 7, 13 to 14. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which heads to life, leads to life. And there are few who find it. Brothers and sisters, the words of the American Baptist pastor, Harry Emerson Fosdick, rings true here. Harry Emerson Fosdick said, and I quote, He who chooses the beginning of a road, chooses the place it leads to, it is the means that determines the end. There's a way that seems good to a man, but the end thereof is death. May God guide you and fill you wisdom to know which gate to go through and on what road to travel on. Can I hear? Amen. Amen. One gate is free up. Anybody and everybody can go. The other gate is premium up. It comes with discipline, focus, so that you do not miss road. Can I hear amen? The third example, and I think I will close here, and I will come back and give you the power of the tongue. We are going to go step by step until you understand that the key of David is effective communication a la premium app. <laughs> I think it was uh, uh, Dr. Elvis, who asked me during the uh, leaders' review, he said, sir, I went to Harvard. Is it Harvard? Huh? Emory. Oh, you went to Bumis University. No wonder you're thinking alike. <laughs> he said, I went to Emory to really study and to really learn this effective communication. And now you have said this, you have said that. What will I call it? I said, stop calling your own effective communication. Call it premium effective communication. Uh, uh -huh. So when you stand to speak, download the premium because the price has been paid. Can I hear? Amen. The third example that shows the difference between the free app and the premium app is the tongue of the natural man Anyone here without a tongue? Can you taste? Can you suck? Can you eat? Can you speak? Without a tongue, you can. But there's a natural tongue and there's a new tongue. One is free up, the other is premium. <laughs> you may say that a tongue is a tongue, but there is the tongue of the wise that promotes health and the tongue of the foolish that speaks rashly like a piercing sword. So my friends, tongues, lips, and mouths of the righteous are not the same with those of sinners. Tongue may be tongue, but there's a difference between free tongue and premium tongue. <laughs> the premium tongue has what you apply to hold yourself back from compounding matters and from talking rashly. Proverbs 12, 13 to 14. Proverbs 12, 13 to 14. The wicked is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous will come through trouble. A man will be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hands will be rendered to him. Proverbs 12, 18 to 19. There's one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise 
promotes health. The truthful leaf shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Did Joseph say one word to Captain Potiphar? When his wife lied against Joseph, did he say a word? What happened at the end of the day? <laughs> at the mention of the name of Joseph, every knee, including Potiphar and his wife, shall bow. Verse 22, Proverbs 12, 22. Lying leaps are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. Proverbs 13, verse number 2. Proverbs 13, 2. A man shall eat well. How? By the fruit of his mouth. But the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life and the power of the tongue. We are coming back next Sunday to look at the power of the tongue. Death and life and the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Matthew 12, 33 to 37. I don't make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, sons of snakes. How can you be evil? Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Where is it coming from? Aha. Uh -huh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth what? Evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word, don't say I'm joking. If you can tape somebody's message, somebody's voice out, I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, the tongue of the foolish can be likened to the free up, while the tongue of the wise of the learned can be likened to premium up. The difference is so clear when you compare the way of wisdom with the way of folly. The way of wisdom and the way of folly. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 1 to 6, is the way of wisdom. Proverbs 9, 1 to 6, wisdom has built a house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. You can go in the archives and see what I call the seven pillars of wisdom many, many years ago. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out a maiden. She cries out from the higher places of the city. What was she crying about? Whoever is simple, teachable. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine that I have mixed. Forsake foolishness and leave. Go in the way of understanding. Person of wisdom will go to wisdom and say, Lord, I lack wisdom. Give it to me. You're going to see how it comes to you and God will not upbraid. But the way of folly is free. It's like free up. Proverbs 9, 13 to 18. Proverbs 9, 13 to 18. A foolish woman is clamorous. She's simple. Her is naive, not teachable. She's simple. I've not finished reading, sir. She's simple and knows nothing. They will claim to know everything. For she sits at the door of her house, on a seat by the highest places of the city, like wisdom, to call to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Listen to what she would tell them. Whoever is simple, as like stupid and naive and foolish, let him turn in here. And for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, stolen water is sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant, but does not know 
that the dead are there, that I guess are in the depths of hell. Is that the end? That's it. It's two ways. The way of wisdom, the way of folly. Both are making invitation, come, come, come and eat. Stolen water, come and drink. Bread of deception, come and eat. But it will fill your mouth with gravels. Friends, the tongue and the ear of the learned are gifts of God. And both are given to those obedient to God and not the rebellious. That's the advantage you have over the ungodly. The ear of the learned and the tongue of the learned are both gifts from God to obedient people. It will not give them to the rebellious. That is the tool for superior, effective communication. Isaiah 54 to 6. Isaiah 54 to 6. The Lord God has given me what? The tongue of the learned. Say that with me. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who is weary. He awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious nor did I turn away. Is it clear to you now that in, with different applications, there are some limited benefits you can get with free app, but all the benefits can only be obtained through the premium app. And who paid the price? I can't hear you. Who paid the price? Jesus. Let me close with Isaiah 55. So you will know whether the price has been paid or not yet paid. This is God's invitation to abundant life, to life of abundance. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. We what? Look at where you are now. Evil will self-destruct. And promoters of evil will self-destruct. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk. Without money and without price. Why? It's been paid for. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. That's if you have the air of the learned. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me here and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Why? Read on. Indeed, I've given him as what? A witness, a pattern, a template. I've given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Go on. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God. And the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Now your ways, my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. How many of you would like to reach out for higher thoughts? For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and the not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bore, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Stand to your feet.
Listen to me. He said, I've given David as a template, as an example for you. Do you remember there was a time David had no dying? He stood in the evening and lifted up his hands and said, Lord, let my prayer come to before you like incense and the lifting up of my hands, accepting like the evening sacrifice. And when God accepted him, he downloaded stuff into his life and he took him from obscurity into prominence. That will be the portion of those who understand how to use the key of David. Lift up your hands to heaven. Father, this day we are sent to higher thoughts and higher ways. We trust you for what you are doing in this house. Thank you for the wisdom you have given to the young and the old. We have located free app and premium app in the word of God. We are not just like anybody. We are not just like everybody. We have to live a focused life, a disciplined life, a purposeful life. And we thank you for grace that you pour upon our lips so that we are blessed always. Thank you, Father. Receive all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday when we will examine the power of the tongue. Thank you very much.